Today we're looking at the Thetford cassette. Um, we've got the C250, which should flush our toilet when we press this button. Um, now we've got nothing working whatsoever, so we're pressing the button and nothing is happening. Um, the first thing that we're going to test or try is there's a little fuse just outside. Um, sometimes they just fur up, they just get a little bit dirty, they, they corrode up with the connections. So that's probably the easiest one for us just to check. So we're going to go outside, have a look where the cassette goes and I'll show you where that fuse is. So just we'll open up our cassette toilet door, we'll remove the cassette and just in the back of here we've got the little fuse right at the at the very back now the chances are sometimes that these corrode up now I don't know whether you can see our fuse there is quite corroded so what I'm going to do is I'm firstly going to check make sure that the fuse is good uh, we can visually do that and we can also use a multimeter just to make sure that we've got continuity across the two contacts so it's making a circuit basically um, I'll go and check that I'll clean up the connections and then we'll see whether that works we've got our fuse and literally we're just going to use a little bit of emery cloth here and we're just going to clean up the contacts And then what we're also going to do we've got an electrical degreaser uh, which what we'll do is we'll just spray on there also and that will just clean off any other corrosion that's left on there and then we'll do a little test just to make sure that it is definitely working. So we've got a multimeter um, and I'm going to select our continuity test um, which is basically just the sound connection so when we press our two probes together we get a sound and then that just tells us that uh, our fuse is okay so that just tells us that we have got continuity and that fuse is working I'll turn that back off so we'll pop this back in the other thing that we'll just do is we'll just put that in and out a few times just again just in case the connections that this fuse goes into aren't brilliant we'll just make sure that that is making a good connection the other thing that we'll make sure is our reed switch that that is just connected and fully pushed in uh, and again we can remove this and just push this in and out a few times just again just to make sure that our connection is good and now what we'll do is we'll just put our cassette back in we'll go and test that and see whether that's fixed our issue I've come back inside of the caravan and that has literally sorted our issue out so a nice easy fix now that might not be just what your issue is um, so there's another little couple of tips just to try now we've got a control board on here and basically we can remove this by just lifting up the very front edge and then we've got the little connector just at the front so that we can lift that up and then we can get into all of our connections now what you'll sometimes find is that these are all corroded up um, so one thing that we'd normally do is if if we've done the tests that we've just done and we still hadn't got any power coming through we'd possibly remove this switch off here and again just literally just take it off and on a few times uh, just to make sure that we haven't got a bad connection on this connection here if that still wasn't working 
we'd then do a voltage test so we'd put our multimeter onto direct current dc so with our red and black we just make sure that we've got the power coming through and we've got 13.16 volts which is about what we've got coming off the charger unit at the moment so the first two there we just make sure that we've got power the other thing that you can then do is if yours wasn't working we can put our power onto the brown and the blue so we've made sure that we've got power coming in and now when we press our button I don't know whether you'll see on the multimeter it's a bit difficult with one hand trying to do it to be fair we'll get a the voltage come up on the on the meter when we press that in so that tells us then that the, the PCB board, this little board here that we're looking at, is actually working. So when we hold that down, you'll see it will go up to 11 and a half, 12 volts on your multimeter. So that then is telling us that the, the PCB board that we're pressing here, um, which is this white connection, white plate in here, that that is actually working. So we've got the power coming in and then the board is working and putting the power through to the pump. So if that was all doing as it should be, so you've got power coming in and you've got power coming out, you know then that this, this little PCB board is okay. If we've then got the power going through and the pump isn't still working, the chances are that it's actually the pump in the cassette itself then that isn't working. So it would just literally be on this one, um, a case of outside underneath I think the pump is located um, from outside in the cassette we look up and the pump is located there some we've got a couple of screws here and we can remove the plate and then we can get to the pump so again it just have to be a little bit of research as to what toilet it is that you've got where the pump is located um, and then just checking the, the pump itself what you can then do once you've got the pump, if it's a, a pump that is literally into, into the container, and if you've got the, the actual water pump, it will normally, if it's a top mount one, you can get it out to the top here. And then the little impeller on the bottom, if you just get a little screwdriver, or maybe even if you're very careful, just one of the probes, and you actually spin the, the cassette pump itself, or the spin the bottom of the, of the pump and get that working. Because it's a toilet, you can put a little bit of WD into the bottom of that uh, impeller just to free that up. And then literally it's a case of pressing the blue button again and just see whether that actually is then getting that to operate. If you hold the pump, you're pressing the button and the pump is getting hot, the chances are that the pump is just solid, it's blocked up completely and you're going to have to replace the pump. Uh, and it's a case of then having a look on the internet to try and find one. Fingers crossed one of the things that we've gone through there will be your issue um for us luckily it was nice and easy it was just the fuse just just a dirty connection just needed cleaning up and that sorted it um but it can either be that fuse this pcb or the actual pump that is the main three issues that you're going to find um so it's just figuring out which one that is Hopefully you found this helpful. If uh, you've liked it, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments. Thanks, I'm Mark at the Caravan Place.